All right, everybody. Uh, I think we're ready to go here. Uh, I have disconnected the Wi-Fi, and I'm on my on my you know Verizon right now. So hopefully, uh, the, the the video is okay, and hopefully the audio is okay. I think I fixed the audio issue that we had earlier. I'm going to put this on a little stand here. Uh, as you get here, let me know if you don't like the video or the audio, or if you can't hear me, or if you can't see me. I might have to do something else, but hopefully this is good. What I've been doing, let me go ahead and set my video up here first. Ah, without getting too much smoke in my eyes. Oh, all right. Hi, Sarah. Can you uh, tell me, can you hear me all right? And can you see me okay? Wait to see if anybody, if you can't hear me again, okay. I'm assuming you can hear me and see me okay. So I've got a fire going down here. I started it about a half an hour ago just to make sure that I had some coals here to be able to cook. Everything's been just literally, ah, sorry, there's still smoke here. Everything has been just, we have had days and days of rain. So everything is just soaked. And I'm all sweaty because I've been carrying around all these rocks all over the place. So I had to dig a little fire pit. I'm down away from the... For my Wi-Fi, we're down. In the, I'm down in the lower part of the of the yard here, and so hopefully everything will go well. What I want to do, oh good, thanks, Sarah. Uh, so, what I want to do here is uh, I want to kind of go through a scenario where we have to deal with a with a wound infection in the field. Now I've had to do this before uh, more than once, and have used different herbs at different times, different places, uh, and it's you know it's something that we can definitely do, especially makes it a little easier for working with an extremity like you know with the hand or the arm or the foot or the leg even uh, where we can soak or we can use hot water we need hot we need heat we also need charcoal if we have an activated charcoal that's a whole nother class that's a whole nother thing we can talk about sometime and it's one of the classes we offer of course if you come down and take the the wfr or many other of our classes the osteotrauma we will uh we go through making activated charcoal you know in the field so charcoal is our friend there but let's say we don't have charcoal or um let's say we're just you know we're, we're, we're just working off of uh, being able to work with uh, you know applying heat and some different herbs to this um, of course you would say well if you have heat then you should have charcoal right um, and this is true but uh, to make good charcoal you really need to be able to cut the oxygen off from it so it takes a lot I mean you either have to dig a big hole or you have to have something that you can use. We we'll usually use the, those little cheapo uh, barbecue grills where you can cut off all the oxygen and burn your wood inside that. And then you need some way to activate it. And for activation, you need either you know acidic or base, or you need salt, or you need uh, calcium chloride, one of, those, one of those four. So if you don't have those, you can't really activate your charcoal, and it's not as useful, honestly, as some of the plants. So one of the plants that I'm gonna use that's really kind of the backbone of what we're doing here is our prickly pear. Oops, dug on it. I've got a little... Uh, Sort of a table set up here and i'm dropping stuff all over the place here i want to show you some plants in a second but the first one i want to show you is a prickly pear so this is a prickly pear this is opuntia species uh this is the one i've ta i talk about a lot we demonstrate a lot we can use this hi hi uh, oh great josiah i'm seeing some other people on are right, awesome everybody um this is something that we can use not only to help clean the wound but also that we can use to be able to heat water and if we didn't have a container to do that with now of course you know, if you're camping or you're, you know, in the in the woods, you should have something, hopefully, as part of your mess kit or whatever you've got you're carrying. You should really a container to be able to boil water, and it's really crucial, right? And if you're going to do any kind of medical stuff in the field, you've got to have something to be able to boil water, and it's just, it's it, you got to do it, right? Whether you're purifying the water to drink or whether you're using it for like we're doing here or any other number of reasons that you need to be able to do that. Okay, so let me try to get out of the smoke here a little bit. Uh, I'm going to get the stuff out of there that's actually smoking it kind of get it over here where it'll burn a little bit on the side there we go okay so i got a bunch of coals down in here let me just talk through some of the herbs and i'll come back to the prickly pear so here's an herb now i should say quickly too what i want to do here is i want to use dried herbs if i can what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a decoction i'm going to do it in the field and i'm going to soak my wound my infected wound in that decoction now of course first we're going to clean the wound we're going to irrigate the wound uh, we can use our prickly pear cactus to help us with that uh, like i mentioned we can use charcoal to help clean the wound but at the point where we're ready and as clean as much as we can or maybe it's closed maybe it's closed up and we just need to get heat in there to be able to get it to open up and get all of that get everything out, out right we need it to be able to to uh, drain we got to drain that wound all right so here's some wounds here's some herbs from around the yard this one everybody will probably recognize right but this is fresh this isn't dry this is yarrow 
All right, this is, uh, I have a whole bunch of yarrow sitting up there. We can see a little bit of a flower coming out here. Another one that is very common around the, around the U.S. is, uh, especially in the south, is going to be your Tillandsia, uh, which is your, your ball moss. So this is Tillandsia recurvata. This is an amazing wound healer and an amazing you know, anti-infective on wounds, in my opinion. I, I really love this. There's a lot of research on this that came out of some other places, not, not out of the U.S. I think it's out of India. But I read some research that was very interesting, and I started using it, and I love it. Okay, so Tillandsia recurvata. This is a member of this is a this is a um, what we would call an uh, uh, an air uh, plant or an epiphyte. This is uh, actually a member of the pineapple family. But I happen to have a dried version of that, which is better. I prefer to put dried into my teas and into my decoctions because we're going to just get more effect out of it, right? We're going to get that the bursting of all those dried plant cells in that hot water. Okay. Uh, another one we have here is. I have, a, I have a green version of it. This is our sumac. This is, grows, so sumacs grow all over the country, and you can use any of the species. This in particular one is virens. This is our evergreen sumac. I happen to have some dried versions of that, so I'm going to go ahead and use that because we use that in some of our different mixtures. So we, we, you know, we dry it ourselves, so I grabbed some out of the, out of the apothecary. This one, you remember yesterday we talked about a poke. This is poke leaf. Now, this is fresh poke leaf, so it's not, you know, not going to be as good. I would prefer, again, to dry it if I could. But our poke leaf, a great wound healer, right? It stimulates the white blood cells. It stimulates the innate immune system around that wound to help it clean and to help, you know, help through the infection. Uh, here's one, algorita. So I should probably pull, I should have pulled a leaf down so you can see. So anybody who's from this area or has listened to a lot of my different podcasts or just look online, uh, an old blog of mine, like from 10 years ago, I talked a lot about algorita. Uh, this is a Berberis trifoliolata. You can see that that yellow color there. That's berberine. So I've got a bunch of those little, uh, you know, berberine. Th this is the root of the trifoliolata. So this is a cousin to Oregon grape, for instance. And speaking of Oregon grape, I happen to have some Oregon grape here as well. So Oregon grape leaf. I talked about this yesterday. Some of the benefits it gives us as a as both a wound healer and also as an anti-infective. Now I've also got something that grows, you know, in every everywhere in the U.S. and all around the world is our oak. So I have. I don't have the oak leaf down here. It's live oak. But what I pulled off the oak that I really like to use is the galls. So these galls you'll find on oaks because they're basically an autoimmune reaction to insects that are boring into the bark. And here they, they're perfectly round. Some places they're different. They're oblong and different, different shapes. The oak itself, this is some oak. It's a couple of oak twigs here. You can see the leaf, a little bit of that leaf there. This is dried oak. That's, that's, that was sitting around. I didn't want to go cut what I would normally use on the oak if I didn't have any other anything else to use. My first choice would probably be the bark and the galls if you can find galls. But if you can't find galls on it, then the bark. And we're we're talking about the inner bark, the cambium there. Ugh, let me get out of the smoke there for a second. So um, in this time of year is not good to just you know if I'm going to cut off uh, any kind of an oak branch that's live. I need to paint it, right? We get we have a problem with oak wilt if you don't do that. So I didn't feel like going to all the trouble to do that. I do need to trim some of our oaks for sure that are up close to the to the shingles, but uh, I didn't. So instead, I pull off some some dried, you know, old branches that we have that are just sitting out there that I normally wouldn't use those, but I would definitely use these galls. These galls are still good. Okay, so we got a whole bunch of stuff here. We've got Talanza recurvata, we've got yarrow, we've got poke, we've got uh, Oregon grape, we've got. Algarita, we've got the oak galls, and we've got the prickly pear. So back to this. How do we use this? Well, I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera down here to sort of a tabletop that I think you'll be able to see well at. Hopefully, there we go. Hopefully everybody can see that. It's kind of a makeshift table here. And then I'm going to go ahead and, and do some cutting on this on this oak now on this uh, prickly pear pad. Now what I want is I want this I want what's on the inside of this pad, but I also want to use it. I can use it as a bowl. I can use it as a cup, and I can use it to boil water in if, if you know at least bring water to a simmer in. So let's try that first. So if I'm going to use it to bring water to a simmer in, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and cut. Uh, if I wanted to use it as a bowl, I would cut it along this way. If I wanted to use it as more of a cup, I would cut it along this way. Right, so it's a little easier to probably. There's, they both have their complications, but let's go ahead and just do it this way. I'll try not to dull my knife up on the rock underneath it. I'm just being real careful here. There we go. So you can see all of that goop on the inside there. Okay, this stuff here. This is what we want right here. This is what we can also use for wound cleaning. We can put this literally. On the wound, I'm going to go ahead and just cut this. I'm going to fillet this in half off camera for a second here, just just so I have a better better balance to do it and don't give myself a real wound for you to laugh at here. Let me just go ahead and fillet a little bit off. So this right here, 
this material here is what we're looking for. This is amazing stuff. We can put this up against for like a gum or a tooth infection. We can cut this to the right shape and put it inside the mouth. We can put it directly on the wound. It is a water pure. It'll, it'll actually filter out water, uh, bacteria out of water as well and, and different, you know, fomites or small particulates. There's some interesting studies on it doing that. Uh, it's a, for, an amazing for sunburns. I would prefer it to say um, aloe for sunburns. So you see how this just, it just scrapes right off here. Okay, so that's the that's the material we could actually use. We can use that for a variety of things, a whole variety of things. But we can also then, we can use the inside of this pad. Now I'm going to try to, I've got kind of an awkward position here, but let me go ahead and try to see if I can keep this on camera while I fillet down. I'm going to be really careful here. i got to kind of turn it up just so I can see what's going on and try to blink through the smoke here. There we go. So what I'm trying to do there is I'm just trying to fillet it open into, think of just making yourself a, like a pita pocket that we're going to hold open and we're going to put water into. Like so. Okay. Do another one. I want to take it down almost as, as close as I can to the edge without cutting through. I want to try to keep it right in the center. I want the, the all this goo, you know, the center goo to be as thick as possible. So i got to pull back a little bit from the, from the smoke. There we go. All right, so if I open this up, you can see I can put, you know, I can go ahead and put some water and I'm going to open it up a little bit and I can actually just use my fingers now and just kind of open it up a little more carefully. Ah, I've got to be careful not to bust through this, the outer wall. Sorry, the smoke's killing me here. Ugh. I got to take the camera for just a second. I'll be right back in front of the camera. Let me just finish this. I'll switch it out with one I already had done. No, just kidding. I did this all on camera or not on camera, but I'm doing it all live. Okay, then what I need to do is open that up. Now to open that up, what I can do is just use some sticks. I just grab a stick here off the ground. I'm pretty sure you shouldn't have a problem finding a stick if you're out here. And I wanna just, just basically use that to, to, to pry, the, to hold the whole thing open, just approximately. Everything here is so wet. Oh, that's a little bit too wide. Not like this. Even that's just a tiny bit too wide. I don't want to, I got to be careful not to push too hard on it. About like that. Put the stick, one stick in there. So just kind of wedging this open. I can do another one, put another stick in there. Oh, man, lots of smoke here. And just kind of wedge this open like so, okay? Now I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to the fire. What I'll do is I'm going to put some water in this. You can see, I'm going to go ahead and just dump about, we'll see what it'll hold, probably about 8 to 12 ounces of water. Well, maybe not. I didn't I didn't cut it open wide enough. It's a small enough pad, but still, this gives me something here. Now I can go just nestle this down into the coals. Uh, should have made a little spot for this. I'm going to go ahead and put some dirt on either side of this just to kind of hold it in place or a rock or whatever you have. Okay, there we go. Now I can move the coals around on top, underneath it, and I'm just gonna go ahead and let that start cooking. You can cook food this way, by the way, too. In our survival courses that we do here, you know, we'll put chicken in there. You can put, of course, veggies, potatoes, whatever in there, and you can cook it just almost like you'd use aluminum foil uh, on the coals, and you'll get the same effect. Plus, it really tenderizes it. And everything in here is edible, right? These are nopalitos. You can buy these for food. You know, in the, in the restaurant, in the, you know, in, in down here in San Antonio, you're going to get them in just in an HEB. You can buy nopalitos, right? Okay, along with that, though, I'm going to go ahead and put my, my, uh, my water on here as well. Okay, grab some gloves. I'm going to here so I can pick this back up without giving myself second-degree burn later. And put a little bit of dirt down right on top of this just to give me a little bit of... I don't know if you all can see that. Okay, there we go. All right, so I can go ahead and start putting my herbs in now, right? I want my hands to be as clean as possible. Obviously, we want everything here to be as clean as possible, but we're out in the field. We're going to, you know, we're going to boil the water. We're going to bring it to a simmer, and then we're going to soak, right? We're going to soak our, our, our infected finger, infected hand, whatever. And, of course, this, you know, is only going to be able to do this with the size of container we have. So, obviously, we're better off, and I should have brought, I, you know, normally carry, like, in my backpack. When I'm backpacking, I carry, like, a little a little pan, a little saucepan, stainless steel saucepan, and I pack, I pack a bunch of stuff into it. And uh, you can use, um, you know, of course, you can use, uh, uh, what's it called, the... the um, 
airplane metal, uh, titanium as well is lighter, but it's only, you save yourself like not even a half an ounce. And honestly, stainless steel works better in my opinion, because it's more, the heat is more consistent. Okay, so now what I can do is I can just take some of these herbs. So here we've got some, you know, here we've got our, our Tillandsia, right? I can start taking this. And of course I can chop it up first if I wanted to. That's kind of a good idea. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of chop it and, and uh, macerate it a little bit or, or uh, make it a little bit finer, open up the surface area a little bit. And I can start sprinkling these into my, you know, my mixture here. And what I'm going for here again is just between the heat and the dried or the fresh herb. If I didn't have dried herb, then the fresh herb, what I'm going for is I'm trying to, um, you know, give myself a fluid, a mixture that I use as an anti infection. Just some gall. That'll turn things a little bit dark as opposed to the berberine in the roots of the of the algorita are going to turn things more yellow, right, because of the berberine, which is very water soluble. So I'll just drop them in there. Berberine is really difficult, very hard. You know, I, I'm probably, I probably could cut this with a knife, but I'm not going to do it on camera here because I probably, in, in, in this situation with the weird funky postures and stuff, I probably end up cutting myself. So I'm going to throw some of that in here too. Okay, just as an example, a little bit more. Now I can throw in some of my sumac. My and of course, I'm throwing it in here before the water is, is coming to a, you know, to a boil, and that's fine. That's fine. And the oak tips there, too. And a little more of the gall here. So once, uh, one time, working with somebody in Colorado, when I first started doing survival classes, which is about 30 years ago, I had infection, uh, infection on his hand, and uh, he didn't tell me about it before he came out there. It was already infected before he came out to the field, and that was back then. What I would do were kind of like walkabouts. It's like, man... So what I did was using the oak there and uh, in, in, the, in the area and using wild geranium root there in, that grows all over the place in the mountains and the foothills in Colorado, I would do this every, and we would do this about three times a day. We'd stop, make sure we could get the heat. And for emergencies, I had a little gas stove. And so I would just heat it up on the gas stove during the day. And then in the evening, we'd just do it over our cook fire. And, uh, and I would heat everything up and I would make him just soak that. I would get it as hot as he could stand it, you know, so we'd sit here and he'd check, check it out and I'd get it to where it was hot as he could stand it rather than worrying about bringing it to a simmer and then back down again. But I was using filtered clean water and uh, I would bring it as hot and I would just make him soak in that. And so we started after about the first 10 minutes of the first day, you know, he just starts, uh, it just uh, um, drains all of this pus out of there, a uh, bunch of bunch of fluid, bunch of pus, bunch of, you know, it's very infected and we just kept doing it. And by the second day or the, well, the third day, the second day that I knew about it, that we were doing this, it was incredible. I mean, it had just started to heal up. The you know all of the all the infection was pretty much gone, and it was it was closing up, and we drained it really well. We kept doing that. We did it for the next day, the last day, and and before the walkout, and he was fine. So this that was one that's one example. I've done it in other places as well. Done it in, in Nicaragua. Okay, if you can tell here, just to interrupt myself from blabbing. There, this is boiling here on the prickly pear. Let me take the phone and show you. We are actually simmering the water right now on the prickly pear. So, pull this off right there. There's simmering. I can see little bubbles forming all over the place here. That's not just from the, the from the demulcent. That's actually we've got bubbles coming up. I don't know if you can see right there. A whole bunch of bubbles coming up right there. I don't know if I have my phone set right or not. It actually is starting to boil faster than the than the the stainless steel one is. Okay. Sorry, I'm sniffing now because I got all this. I've been breathing smoke. All right. So things I want to say about this real briefly. We have a wound healing and management infection management course that starts today. It's online. It's uh, I think it's three weeks or four weeks. All kinds of stuff just like this. Teach about the colors of the wound, how we work with the wound, the herbs we use for the wounds, the different materia medica, video demonstrations, and all kinds of stuff like that. We also have a uh, open office hours tonight. So if you've got questions about this, I, it's hard for me to answer them here, but if you've got questions about this, come on down to our open, open office hours. It's online. I'll put the link in here, and I'll put it in all the groups that I've, I've posted this to. I'll put the link here. Come on down and check us out tonight. I think it starts at 7 p.m. Central Time. And just, you know, it's open. And we'll have a little bit of a lecture. I think Suchel's going to talk about... Um, maybe some some uh, food preservation stuff. I'm going to talk a little bit about wound healing again, since that's kind of the topic right now, since we just started that. And oh shoot, I got disconnected for some reason. My stupid phone tried to connect to the wireless. All right, everybody.